So Final Fantasy 16 is here. Arguably one of the biggest buzz I've seen in a while, especially given that I haven't seen a group on the internet so happy about playing a demo in a long time. But with a new game as big as Final Fantasy, there's always going to be that classic, classic conversation. Is it even Final Fantasy anymore? And this isn't anything new, mind you. Of course, this is definitely a major jump in direction from turn-based RPG to full-blown Devil May Cry action-oriented combat. And you will see it online if you, you don't even need to look online, it's there. Not my Final Fantasy. A lot of people are saying it, but you can look at the reviews. This is a glowing game, has received an insane amount of praise, and I honestly think rightfully so. But it always is interesting because this isn't anything new. Whether it was when Final Fantasy made the jump from 2D to 3D, you can go back, talk with people who are around exactly when that happened. The arguments and the hair pulling tension. This isn't anything new for Final Fantasy. Every single time. Now, sometimes it's more extreme discussions than others, but there's always the people who will say, this isn't Final Fantasy, I want it back to the way it was before. There's still people who want it back to 2D pixels, right? This is what Final Fantasy is. It is such a large, massive series. We're on 16, right? This is always going to be a hot topic of discussion, but with this being arguably one of the bigger leaps for sure, we are no longer in turn-based RPG. We're in full-blown action-oriented Devil May Cry territory, and did I enjoy that? Yeah, I really did. I think the best way to really sum up my experience with this game, I say this all with compliments, mind you, this isn't me throwing disses, it's as if Devil May Cry met The Witcher 3 with a Game of Thrones level storytelling, and that was the package that is Final Fantasy 16. And I say that with pure compliments there's nothing there's no shade i'm not saying ending of game of thrones so i'm saying like that epic multi-story where are we going big set pieces cinematic storytelling with insane level combat it was really funny though seeing some people rag on the combat on this game because they were wearing the rings that allow you to just not have to really play or think too hard the combat in this game has an insane level of depths more so than i've experienced in a long time and there is so much meat and potatoes to this game that even when you think you're full, you don't need to consume any more. They keep piling these new set pieces, these new characters, new boss fights, new abilities. The mixing and matching, this game is remarkable. It really is. To those who say it's not their Final Fantasy, well, I mean... Final Fantasy will never be for everyone 100%. Each game will have a big fan base, and there'll be people who just don't like it. And that's okay, but this game is not bad in any way. It is different from other Final Fantasies, but that's really nothing new from previous. Now, I want to talk about combat first and foremost, because this game is really smart with how they go about difficulty. So when you start the game, it asks, are you here for the story or are you here for the combat, right? And you think, well, that's not much of a difficulty option. But they give you these rings that allow you to either make the game easier or you can just not wear them at all. So you can control your dog or you can put on a ring that basically combos things for you if you don't want to learn how to combo yourself. So maybe sometimes you'll be at a point where you just feel like you need a little bit of a helping hand. You put on one of those rings, which there's like four or five that can do different things for you. And it, it's an interesting way of handling difficulty, especially because like this game, it is such a different style of Final Fantasy that many people might struggle more than others if they haven't played a lot of series like Devil May Cry before. But there is such depth to the gameplay, and I mean this. So you start off with just one wheel of abilities, these flames, and that's cool and everything. But as you start upgrading and as you see more of these like titan creatures and you get different abilities, the combat is so insane. I've seen people dumb it down to just pressing a button to swing your sword and a button to dodge. And that is the farthest thing from the truth. As an example, so once you start getting the ball moving a little bit, you might notice, okay, one of these abilities really is good at launching people into the air. And if I get this other ability which allows me to slam things from the ground if I'm in the air, you then start figuring out how to combo things a lot better and once you really get into the hang of it and they do such a brilliant job at training you because you could ignore it completely but I highly advise against it. There's a training area that you can go in, program the enemies to do exactly what you want. Do you want them indestructible just so you can get all the timing right or do you want to just continuously kill different versions of creatures? And that's where I really started to understand the combat. I started understanding the timing of how many strikes before a magical 
bursts or how to do perfect dodges or how to combo and chain these abilities because once you get more than one wheel of abilities of magical abilities that is that's where the game really starts opening up and they just continue to introduce more and more abilities and man when you pull off some of the combos in this game you just feel like the biggest badass because your character looks like a badass and the fact that you live up to those expectations with the combos it is so in-depth the number of monsters they throw at you and the fact that within the intro to the game mind you some of the things I was doing felt like the end game for a lot of series and this isn't something that goes away constantly you'll be fighting okay yeah this is a mini boss this is a bigger boss but then that bigger boss becomes an extraordinary boss and you're thinking what are we watching this feels like the end of a movie this feels like the end of an epic 50 hour adventure and we're only 10 hours in and that's the excitement and the thrill of the combat and the highs and lows and yeah it has a formulaic rpg kind of route of okay you have this big epic battle now we're back to base now we're gonna do some side quests we're gonna go collect some herbs we're gonna do these basic rpg things but that's no different than any jrpg out there right does it really break the mold with those not really but it's fun it's fun just catching your breath and going about these different activities and the characters are just so good man i compared this to kind of like a game of thrones style storytelling and that's really what it feels like the cutscenes are some of the most impressive cutscenes i've seen ever i honestly think that and they just immediately hook you in and i don't want to go over big spoilers i'm not going to show boss fights i don't want to talk about big set pieces because this is a really emotional and compelling story i found and i really enjoyed how things open up at the appropriate moments and because they went about things so intelligently with the story and characters and world building you can have such a different experience to other people if you just watch the cutscenes or you actively dive into the lore. And I'm not usually someone who likes to read codex pages or learn extra things, I just, that's not really for me. But they introduced a mechanic in this game where at any moment, whether you're in a cutscene, whether you're in the world, you hold down on the touchpad and it brings up a menu. Maybe you'll be in a cutscene, maybe you'll forget a character's name, maybe you don't know what they're saying, like what's that name? You hold that down, you pause the cutscene, and you can read a little text box. And it immediately makes you understand things at such a deeper level, and it makes it feel like they didn't need to do that, but if more games don't incorporate things like that with like a rich lore like a Final Fantasy world, they're completely missing the mark because it added to such complexity. And just, there's moments that just truly took my breath away where characters just, the sacrifice or the pain and the torment and just thinking, I, once again, I feel like this is the end of a game in some ways, but just, the amount of twists and turns and the way this world opens up as you basically lose everything and try to grab things back and try to rebuild your life, it is such a Game of Thrones epic style storytelling where you just feel like there's all these different political stories at play, all these fascinating characters, and there is a lot of cutscenes. Like, you'll be putting the controller down for 20 minutes sometimes, and some people may not like that, but that's what made this world really pop, is imagine... Like, I used to see this all the time when Game of Thrones was at its peak, where people would be like, man, wouldn't it be so cool to play a game that was just like this, right? You know, you have all these epic narrative and character drama, and then you just pick up and go into a big battle. That's like literally this game in a nutshell. You continuously are watching the coolest show or movie, and then get to interact with it for a couple hours, and then you get another episode of the show. And it's just, it hooks you right in. The music, man, the music was, it, Final Fantasy's no, no stranger. And is this the best music in any Final Fantasy? I wouldn't say so, but is it absolutely amazing and fits the bill? Oh, 100%. But it's crazy because this is a Final Fantasy game through and through. It feels story-wise, narratively, the characters, the interactions, it is. But the biggest difference is it's not a turn-based RPG. It is an action-oriented game, but where it really pops, and I think sometimes people look at clips where characters are just swinging their sword around crazy and they're doing these combos, and they really don't appreciate how complex the ability wheel actually is. This is one of the most insane mix and match of abilities that I've experienced in an action game ever like seriously that's how cool the combos are and i think it's very easy to get even like 10 hours into this game not really exploring the combat just kind of mashing some buttons and yeah it looks cool but it doesn't really feel like i'm doing anything too crazy but i think once you either die from a big boss or you really start realizing that okay i must be doing something wrong because my i'm kind of getting pushed in more than i think i should and then you either use the training room or you just just experiment better on the fly going up against these different creatures and you really start to realize that okay 
it's not just a basic, oh, you can dash and attack or you can dodge or throw a fireball. No, it really starts opening up and it is an incredible game. And yeah, Final Fantasy is always not gonna be a new Final Fantasy. It's no different than back when Final Fantasy VII dropped. People jump from 2D to 3D or just, okay, we're losing the turn base. We're going in a different direction. I don't know if I like that. This conversation is gonna continue to happen. We might get to Final Fantasy 27 when it becomes an FPS and the same conversations are gonna happen as we're currently having with 16. It's nothing new, but is it my Final Fantasy? Yeah, I really, really like it. And while it may not be an absolute open world, I like the linear approach. I like the just crafting a nice little environment and having these, yeah, sometimes it opens up a bit better. But at the end of the day, it felt like because it wasn't just this massive open world, everything kind of felt like it had a purpose. All the characters that were placed or the enemy variants, it felt like it knew what it wanted to do. And honestly, it's absolutely beautiful. It really is. I played on the graphics setting on my PS5 and I know a lot of people have been complaining motion blur and stuff and usually if I can turn off motion blur I do I didn't really like how the game looked without honestly that motion blur a little more on so that's how I play personally but yeah this game is really good honestly it's no different than other previous Final Fantasies in the way that it's changing the formula and having heated debates on what is or isn't a Final Fantasy but as a Devil May Clive as we might want to call it this Devil May Cry formula that is so complex you can understand why the director called it his swan song because this is going to be a hard level of complexity and polish to top on a combat level and the story has that epic storytelling that just hooked me in with early seasons of Game of Thrones, and I'm, I'm loving it, absolutely am. But have you been playing Final Fantasy 16? Let me know what you've been thinking down below. Is it not your Final Fantasy? Are you loving it? Are you brand new to the world? Whatever you're saying, let me know down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. And hey, why not subscribe if you're new around here as well? I also have a Patreon where you can consider supporting, where you get to see videos like these just early, live reactions to all the shows I'm covering. So consider supporting if you so wish. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.